Okay, so we're here this morning for a revocation decision. Um, I think you should, let me ask you some questions. I think you answered these at your preliminary hearing, but let me just be sure. Have you been treated for mental illness in the past five years? Or are you currently taking medication for a mental illness? Yes, ma'am. Okay, can you read and write? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand the parole violation charges against you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and did you, do you wanna speak in your own behalf today? Yes, ma'am. Okay, did you request a, a appointed counsel at your preliminary hearing? Uh, I was advised that the counsel would only be if I could not read and write and understand what the hearing was about. Right, so uh, I just wanted to be sure that was explained to you. Yes, ma'am. So uh, let me tell you how it's going to work. I'm going to read the allegations against you, and then you'll enter a plea of guilty or not guilty. You can add a statement to either one of those pleas, uh, and then we'll have a conversation about it. Um, yeah. We'll also hear your mother has indicated she'd like to speak on your behalf, so we'll ask for her comments. And then before we vote, you can make a statement also. Okay? Yes, ma'am. You got it? Yes, ma'am. All right. So. We're conducting a revocation hearing because you're accused of violating the conditions of your parole, specifically condition number four, which states you violated this condition of supervision by committing the offenses of battery of a dating partner, resisting an officer, possession of a firearm, or carrying a concealed weapon by a convicted felon, illegal use of weapons, dangerous instrumentalities, and aggravated second degree battery. You were arrested by the Ascension Parish Sheriff's Office on or about May 14, 2020 and charged with these offenses. How do you plead guilty or not guilty? I plead not guilty. And with a statement? My statement is that I was charged- Wait, wait, wait hold on. I, I, I'm gonna ask you for your statement in a minute. So your plea oh, is not guilty with a statement? Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. So number condition number 10, you failed to make any payments towards your supervision fees. How do you plead guilty or not guilty? I'm gonna plead guilty to that. But okay, okay. Well, we're, we're gonna talk about it. All right, guilty with a statement, good. So let's talk about your statement for number four, where you, you pled not guilty with a statement for violating, uh, committing those offenses. Yeah, my statement? statement? My statement is I was charged with those crimes due to my jacket and I was not convicted of any of those crimes. All of those crimes are gone. I feel like- Did I was, you not plead, did you plead guilty to simple battery? Yes, ma'am. But the reason I pled guilty to simple battery was my parole officer. I even have a text message and a, and a recorded call. He's telling me if I take simple battery, and anything under, he was gonna let me go. And I have, Lindora Musco has that on text messages that he was gonna, that that was well, gonna- it's not up call. to him, it's not up to the officer, it's up to this body. So did you plead guilty uh, to disturbing the peace? Yes, ma'am. Yes, so, ma and that was uh, the lesser charge for the illegal use of weapons. It, it was not a legal use of weapons in, in the post. In, no, in the I'm saying that's what you were charged with. However, in that instance, you pled guilty to disturbing the peace. Yes, ma'am. Right? Okay. Yes, ma'am. So let's talk about condition number 10 about the payments. You said you guilty with a statement. Well, I couldn't make the payments because I came home to the coronavirus and nobody was working. I came home February 27th and the country shut down. So I had no means of making those payments. And that's why I am guilty of that violation. But I was arrested in May and they still send in payments. But if I could, if I was to, I've been in jail six months. If I was to be able to make those, if that would help me to go home, I could make those payments today. I could pay that today. Right now. Well, so, so you could pay it today, but you couldn't pay it then? then that's no, man, confusing. I'll be Oh, uh, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I got a stimulus check in the mail Saturday, so I have $1,200. I can make my payment okay. to home today. I'm going to be completely yeah. honest. Yes, ma'am. I get that. That makes sense. Good. Yes, okay. I'm going to, uh, I don't have any other questions. I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues. Mr. Roche. Mr. Template, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good. 
Did you know when you pled to civil battery, which is a violent misdemeanor, it was a revocable offense? I, I did not. I, I was told that it only a uh, domestic abuse battery would be a, a violent offense, and the Ladora Musco is the is the victim on that, and she would tell you the only re I acted in self defense. I was I was attacked, and I sir, pushed her off. Of it. Sir, by you pleading guilty, a simple battery, it's a violent offense, a revocable offense. You would buy wrong and basically because you pleaded to a violent misdemeanor i'm going to vote to revoke you this morning simply because of that guilty plea madam chairman miss wise oh i have no questions all right so uh your mother we we'd like to hear from your mother she's indicated she'd like to speak ma'am miss Tomplay, we'd like to hear from you can you unmute your microphone, please? Nope, that was the video. Push the microphone. Okay, we see you now. So if you could, if you, there you go. Now we got it. Okay, good morning. I'd like to tell mm -hmm. everybody on the parole board and yourself, good morning. And I appreciate y'all taking justice. But as far as my son goes, I just like, my mother died of COVID and the rape. I, he has a place to stay. He has my house. I own my house and he can live with me. I have a car to get him back and forth from work. And I have a lot of con connections in the welding field. I, I worked for 35 years before I was disabled. So he has my complete backing and I will pay his probation fees as you know, whatever. And I just would, I'd like him to be home to be able to help me because I'm disabled. And you know, he, he does, he would do everything around the house for me and I really could use his help. All right, thank you, ma'am. We appreciate you uh, giving us those remarks this morning. Thank you. Mr. Thanks for hearing me. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Tom Play, what would you like to say to the uh, to the parole committee? I would like to say that uh, I I was ill advised about the simple battery. I, I acted in mm -hmm. self defense. I would have never took that. I had a I got affidavit trope. I got the victim right here that would tell you I acted in oh. self defense. And if my parole officer wouldn't have told me if I took that charge, he said, if you take that, I'll let you go. And I didn't realize I'd never been through this. I know I, I was ill advised and I wouldn't have took it because I've been in jail six months. I took that plea after 30 days and I still sat five more months. I, would, I wouldn't have took that. I just was understanding that charge came off of me. My parole hold would come off of me and I would go home. And I, I need my mom sick. My grandmother died right before I came in here. And, and yeah, I have mental health problems, but I've been seeing a psychiatrist now for five months. I've got adjusted back on my medication. I feel better than I felt in a long time. And, and I was only, I, I, my violation was, I feel like the misdemeanor charge. And I understand why, why it would seem like that, but I also, I just say, I'm just saying that I was ill advised and, and I wouldn't have took it. Like I said, I took that plea in July it's, it's November now. I would have never accepted that if I would have realized that was a violation. I would have never accepted that that, that plea because I had affidavits and everything wrote saying I was I was sleeping and I was attacked. Yeah, which you should have presented all that in court. You know, I mean, this is not the place to determine. Yes, yes, ma'am. I understand that. I'm and I and, and like I said, my parole officer just told me wrong and. and that's the only reason I did that. And, and the coronavirus is out. My mama has lost her daddy, my her mama, my grandma. She has nobody else. Been in jail over six months right now. I mean, for-, for, for Have you ever been on supervision before? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right. Yeah, I see that. Have you ever been revoked before? Yes, ma'am. And, and, and the re I revoked myself because I was- Okay. With what I've done. All right. All right, uh, is the panel prepared to vote? 
make a decision? I'm going to defer to you, Mr. Roche. Yes, um, Mr. Templet, and I've read everything in the report that was given me. I've read the preliminary hearing, and based upon your guilty plea to civil battery, which is a violent misdemeanor, my decision this morning is to revoke your supervision. Uh, Ms. Wise? Uh, young man, uh, the, the, the residence plan that you have now worked out with your mom and all that's going on with her, it, it'll behoove you to go with that one the next time you get out instead of trying to stay with the girlfriend mm -hmm. and, and get all that, all that complications and the police happen to be called. But my vote is to revoke your supervision uh, based on your guilty plea to number 10 and uh, your guilty plea to a crime of violence. I concur with my colleagues. Uh, Mr. Tomplay, my vote today also is to revoke for the reasons that have been stated. So today, sir, your parole has been revoked. Uh, I do have a, will I receive the six months credit for time, sir? I can't answer. Uh, the parole board doesn't do the time calculations, so uh, I, I can't answer that question for you. Ms. Reynolds, I believe that's the last case at Ascension. Can we please have close out? Okay, so the information that I have, by the way, and I think after I share it with you, would uh, you probably will feel, <laughs> well, I don't feel bad for him. Well, let's put it that way. Uh, Richard shared with me a few things. One is I'll just go over this one right here, which is <laughs> this is maybe what he's being revoked for. I don't know. This is 2018 impaired driver flips car arrested for fifth DWI. Five. Five. Man, you know. And so there is something that we can talk about, which is, yeah, we hear over and, and over and over all the time in these revocation hearings where the where they say, um, I just took the, I just agreed to misdemeanor because I didn't know I would get revoked. Either they say my attorney told me I wouldn't get revoked, my parole officers told me I wouldn't really get revoked, and that's messed up. And I don't believe it's just an excuse. I believe it's true because why would they take a deal if it means they're going to go to prison? They're going to get revoked. They're, they would have all the incentives of fighting it. And yeah, go see if the DA would take them to trial when they don't have a cooperating victim, like in this case. It's, so it's messed up that it's happening that often. Like, you know... It's not okay to send someone to prison by giving bad advice. And we do see it happen all the time, but I don't feel bad for this guy. How do you even just get, I mean, this hearing was, was in 2020. So that means after his fifth DUI while flipping a car, he, he was somehow out in, 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 in like just a year after doing that? I mean, how is that possible? And here's something else, you know, I'm just going to read it. Uh, Richard put together a bunch of notes because he went through his records and I can't screen share it, but, I'll, but he's gotten in his short life revoked twice. Fast forward a year and a half to July of last year. So I guess he'd gotten out again. He, he gets battery. He forks over $2,500 of bond. The next day he hits the street. A month afterwards in August, so this is July, now we're in August, he fails to appear, uh, he fails to appear to court. So, um, and then he commits uh, domestic aggravated assault. He's caught with, um, he's caught with, uh, with a really, you know, heavy uh, narcotic. Then he takes almost two months up until October. So now he's sitting in jail. He comes up with a 70K bond and he hits the streets again. Now, January rolls around and again, uh, the judge cuts him slack. I, 
I don't know. Oh, Richard goes on, but wait, there's more. Three weeks later, February, he's back again for domestic island, you know, for DV. Um, and theft of a thousand dollars and subsequently draws two contempt of courts and gets 120 days in jail. So he's not, not behaving, right? Then um, it goes on. After serving 90 days for that, now we're in May and he posts $275,000 uh, bond. Now he's only paying a percentage of that, but still I wonder if it's his mother that's given him the money, you know, because you know, the, where is he coming up with that money? But maybe it's a girlfriend, who knows? Now he's, he's back on the streets for two weeks. It's June now. So remember, this started in July. So it's basically 11 months. And he's back on the street for just two weeks after posting 275K uh, bond. And he violates a protective order. And he's also caught withholding more of the bad stuff. Now, trying now while he's sitting in ascension, while trying to amass a 100K, 10K bond and awaiting trial. So, so Richard says, confident that we'll see him on a new parole violation whenever the trial is finished. Um, Yeah. So what can you say? I mean, this guy just seems to love prison like a lot. Like he really likes it there. He likes jail. He likes prison. I don't know. Like, at what point does someone just get tired? But yeah, like I said, I can't feel bad for him. Anyways, with that I'll let you go.